Brothers, we're about to start the next session, and we're very privileged to have Sheikh Jaffa Idris with us, who's the president of the American Open University, and he specializes in philosophy. Sheikh Jaffa also has his website, so if you want to uh, get more information or indeed email, she email the Sheikh, his website is jaffaidris.com, and his email is j at jaffaidris.com. Sheikh will be talking for about 30 to 45 minutes, and some Q&A slips will be given out. If those are brought up to the front, we will answer some of the questions, and if any are left over, we have a big Q&A session later in the program. And if we have time, we have a roaming mic, and we may take some questions from the floor. The title of today's session, of this session, is The Nature of Good and Evil. And inshallah, we hand over to Sheikh Jaffa Idris. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina. Man yahdi allahu fahuwa al-muhtad wa man yudlil falan tajida lahu waliya murshida thumma ma ba'd. I will use the words, uh, I will have in my mind the Arabic words yeah, of good and evil. That is al-khayr wa al sharr uh, which are somewhat different from the uh, English, uh, English words. So because uh, all that I have to say is based, inshallah, on the Quran. And so I'm using these words in the senses in which they are used uh, in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet So let us start with uh, explaining, not giving a definition, <laughs> just uh, for the sake of this paper, explaining what we mean by good and what we mean by evil. In the very general sense, <coughs> good is something that is agreeable to the person. Agreeable in the sense of being enjoyable or beneficial uh, 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 or anyway. And evil is just the opposite of that. Something which, uh, suffering for example, is, is evil. Uh, hunger is evil. <laughs> uh, lack of sleep is evil. So we are using the words, as I said, in this uh, Quranic uh, s sense. Now, there are two kinds of uh, good and evil. Acts which we intentionally do can be good in e or evil, and things which happen to us of which, on which you have no control can also be good or evil. I will concentrate on the first part, and that is uh, the acts that we do. Uh, no human being, no rational person uh, would do, would refuse to do something of uh, whose goodness he or she is absolutely sure. No person would do this. <laughs> and no person would do something of whose, of, uh, whose evil or harm or so he or she is absolutely sure. Even a child would not do this. If a child touches something hot, hmm, now it will not uh, repeat that experience again because it knows that this is evil. It is harmful. So, uh, uh, so I would like you to have this in mind. And there is ample evidence in the Quran for this. I repeat, no rational person would do, would, would do, do something which he or she um, is absolutely sure to be harmful or evil to it. And no person would refuse to do something uh, of whose goodness uh, he or she is absolutely sure. Uh, if good and evil, in this sense, are relative, relative terms. What is good to one person might not be good in this general sense, good to another person. For example, an ayah of the Qur'an is sent down to the Prophet وسلم, according to Surah Al-Baqarah, it increases some people in faith and, it, and increases some people in kufr. The same, the same verse. 
Uh, some people might be suffering from the same, say, uh, disease. And the doctor asks you, are you allergic to this kind of medicine? You say yes. So he doesn't give you the medicine. The medicine will be harmful to you. But if it, someone else is suffering from the same yeah, su uh, uh, disease and he's not allergic, the medicine will be uh, good to him or her. Something might be good to you in that, remember also, that very general sense. Good to you now, but not good in the future. Might be good to you, uh, evil to you now, but very useful in the future, uh, and so on. So these are, uh, to some extent, uh, uh, relative, uh, relative terms. Uh, also about happenings, the same thing. Something that happens to you might be, m m might be perceived by you to be evil. Hmm? But then you discover in the future that it was, uh, uh, it was good, and vice versa. So, <clears throat> someone might say that on, on this understanding of yours, Everyone necessarily does good and avoids evil. So what is the problem now? What is the problem of good and evil? If everyone does good and avoids evil. The problem is that they do what they perceive to be good and avoid what they perceive to be evil. But their perception is not always, does not always correspond to the truth. So the main problem is that of ignorance. The main problem of good and evil is that of ignorance. We do evil because we perceive it to be good. We refuse to do good because we perceive it to be uh, evil. And uh, there are, I have tried to, to <laughs> Uh, enumerate uh, from the Quran uh, the kinds of causes and, and uh, of ignorance and also the forms uh, which that ignorance takes and inshallah uh, I, mean, I benefit greatly from uh, uh, from this topic and I am grateful to the brothers who suggested it to me and I hope uh, I will be able to share with you some of those benefits because they are based on the Quran so, the, the first cause of doing evil is imperfection. We are created beings. And one alim said, all created beings, even the angels, hmm, um, don't have perfect knowledge. That is why even the angels sometimes dispute and quarrel. Right? You remember some of the hadith about this? Uh, was because they don't have uh, perfect knowledge. And so, uh, every human being will necessarily err or commit sins. Even the best people commit sins, but that, that would be very minor sins. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ uh, the, told us that he makes istighfar and makes tawbah more than 70 times a day. And he urged us to do to do the same. Because we have to sin. We have to err. We are imperfect, uh, uh, imp imperfect beings. So that is the first uh, reason. The second is that uh, in this world, I, I, because this world is a world of test. It is not a world of reward. So uh, you cannot have evil without some suffering, some sacrifice, which you consider to be evil. Uh, think of Hajj, for example. Think even uh, of jihad, where you might lose your, your, your life. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالُ وَقُوَّ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made qital fighting uh, uh, obligatory on you 
and you don't like it. Because no one likes to, be, to, to, to get killed. No one likes um, just to spend um, uh, uh, his money and, and sacrifice. But we do this because this is the only means to do something which is good and which is worth the sacrifice. This is the second problem. Uh, uh, and if, if there was no, if, if, if good did not demand any kind of uh, sacrifice uh, or effort or so, everyone would have done uh, whatever is good. But because of this, in the hereafter, there will be pure good and pure evil. Paradise is a place of bliss. There is no suffering. Hellfire is a place of um, torment, suffering, pure. There is no uh, good there. But in this world, uh, those are not completely separated. And third, or, <clears throat> a person can be completely ignorant, total ignorance, has total ignorance of some good or evil. Uh, he might not have any knowledge at all that this thing is good or, or that is evil. Even if it is in the Quran or the Sunnah, he's ignorant. He doesn't know that the Prophet said, uh, don't do this. Uh, in this case, he will be excused. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not hold a person responsible for something which he did not know to be, uh, uh, to be evil, uh, and he did it because of that. Suppose that someone embraces Islam today. He doesn't know everything about Islam. He became a Muslim. Uh, but he didn't know that it was forbidden to drink wine. <laughs> and he drank wine in the evening. He, he, he embraced Islam in the morning and drank wine in the evening. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold him responsible for that. Uh, uh, fourthly, uh, the partial ignorance. This is the, 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 the problem. Uh, this is... Uh, Partial ignorance of some good or evil. And <clears throat> For example, a person might acknowledge the fact that, uh, 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 that lying or fornicating is evil. But he also sees that he can make some gains by stealing. That's why people steal. Uh -huh. uh, uh, or avoid some harm by lying or find enjoyment in fornicating. That's why people do this. Uh -huh. and, 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 and that is good in the sense in which we uh, explained good and evil. If such a person fails to see the greater evil in these acts, he can still avoid them if they are associated with some greater external evil that are made to be associated with them. And that is the wisdom of punishment. A person might fail to see uh, the evil of stealing. But if that stealing is associated with some punishment, especially if the punishment is severe, then he will avoid um, uh, stealing. The same with uh, other, uh, uh, other things for which uh, there is uh, a pun uh, punishment. And that is why... Uh, punishment um, in, in Islam uh, must be public because the aim is not just to make the person suffer but to deter him and other people from repeating the same, uh, the, the same, uh, the same act. Uh, some people say, uh, why, why, why publicize this? Yes, that is the reason because uh, we, uh, the, uh, Islam wants uh, this evil to be associated with this kind of, uh, of, uh, of punishment. And I think uh, perhaps some of our brothers who are physicians uh, can tell us that uh, sometimes uh, they, uh, they cure some uh, diseases by this kind of association between uh, doing something and, 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 and have an electric shock, or, uh, sh shock when, uh, when you do that. Um, Now, there is also, this is E, momentary 
ignorance, momentary. And this is very important to, to see that even a very good person who normally does not do certain evil things would sometimes uh, say have uh, an unlawful relationship with a woman or tell a lie or, or, or so. Why, why do they do this? Because at the moment of doing that evil act, they lose their knowledge of its being evil. So that is why the Quran called that jahiliya or jahl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, says, الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. He makes su, which can be uh, translated here as evil, uh, uh, he commits an act of evil. But then, you will have something like a blackout of the, of the knowledge. He commits the sin. But then immediately, uh, he sees the, I mean, the, the light of knowledge is restored. He sees the atrocity of what he did, and then uh, he, rep uh, he, he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, when you read this verse, uh, by, by ignorance here is not meant that he did not know that it was haram. إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةً جَهَالَةً here means what I have just uh, explained. It does not mean that they did not know that it was uh, haram to, uh, to do it. Uh, if satanic deception, uh, these um, different forms of, uh, of ignorance and causes of ignorance are not uh, mutually, uh, I mean, uh, 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 there's overlap in, in them. I am just uh, enumerating them uh, just to make things uh, c clear. Uh, satanic deception. Now, satan, the shaitan knows, as um, the, the fact that we mentioned at the beginning, he knows that no one would do evil if he clearly sees it as evil. So what does he do, or she, is there uh, other satanic women also, female, what, 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 uh, what does he do? He makes it seem good. He makes it seem good. And the, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word tazyin, zayyana lahum shaytan. Zayyana means to adorn to give it a false uh, yeah, uh, appearance. Um, inside it is bad, but outside um, it, it seems to be good. And that is why uh, people uh, do, uh, do uh, this evil. Now, the worst people are those who have, to, uh, who are totally ignorant of good and evil. Ignorant not in the sense that they uh, did not know that it's in the Quran or the Sunnah, but they have become so bad they did not that they don't see evil as evil. Neither do they see good as good. They see good as evil, and they see evil as good. Uh, this is referred to in the verse, هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا Shall we tell you of the worst in deeds? الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعًا They are the ones whose efforts are misguided, but who yet think that they are doing good. Someone said, this is the most frightening verse in the Quran. That a person does evil 
but he sees it as good. And he does good, but, and, and he avoids good because he sees it as evil. These are the, the worst people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them Al-Akhsarina A'mala Al-Latheena dalla sa'yuhum fil hayati al-dunya Wuhum yahsabuna Annahum yuhsinuna suna'a Now If the problem is Ignorance Then the solution is knowledge Is knowledge But the ulama said Say that Knowledge is of two kinds For knowledge to be effective to motivate you to do good and avoid evil, it must be, uh, it must have a, uh, a place deep in your heart or your mind. And it should not be just um, knowledge on the tongue. Yani if there are two persons, say someone knows the Quran by heart, and, 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 and he knows so many ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu And he knows the ruling, uh, fiqh ruling on so many things. And there's another person who has, who knows only a few ayahs of the Quran, a few ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu But you see the second person doing good more than the first person. And avoiding evil more than the first person. Now, in the judgment of the Qur'an, the latter has more knowledge than the first one. Because this is the true knowledge. This knowledge is not supposed to be just knowledge um, on, 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 of the tongue, or upon the tongue of the person. Uh, so for knowledge to be effective, it must have two conditions. This one I have just mentioned is the first. The second depends on the nature of, of knowledge. Not every knowledge can help you uh, to do good or to avoid evil. What is the most important knowledge that makes you do good and avoid evil? What is? Knowledge of? Knowledge of? The Book of Allah. You don't remember a verse in the Quran? Knowledge of? Huh? Just mention the word as it is used in the Quran. Knowledge of? Knowledge of Allah. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ This is the most important knowledge. And, and, and that is why, I, as I, uh, the, the, in the example which I mentioned, an ordinary person who does not perhaps read or write, who does not know يعني, many of the verses of the Quran, but he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, because he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is an association between knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love of Allah and fear of Allah. I, I, I added the word love because uh, the ulama say that fear is the result of love. And first you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then you fear, uh, you fear him because you don't want to do something that he doesn't like. That, that, that is the cause of, uh, of, of fear. So fear is not, is not the basic thing. The basic thing is, uh, is, is, uh, is love. So the most important knowledge is knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the person. It makes the person good. It is not like knowledge of individual uh, goods and, and, and evils. I know that this is evil, I don't do it. I know that this is good, I do it. But when you have true knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your, your heart is changed. Now you become ready to do all kinds of good and avoid all kinds uh, of, uh, of evil. So if a person wants to be really good, uh, there is no way for him or her except to know more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And there are, of course, uh, so many ways of knowing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you read uh, the Quran because the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You think about it. You just don't read it, just parrot huh? You think about it. it. It makes a change in heart. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and then you will have what is called uh, a personal experience. Hmm? If, if you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make a qiyam al layl you fast, then you will have direct knowledge of Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, 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 and that changes um, your heart, makes you a, a, a better person, uh, and, and, and you will have something that's very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a reward for this, makes you see good as good. Not only as good, and he makes you love it. See, there is a difference between doing something just because it's a duty, like what soldiers uh, do, and, and doing it because you love it. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes evil things hateful to you. But that is a very high um, <laughs> degree of iman. We might, uh, we might have some glimpses of that, but uh, a person like the Prophet وسلم, or the great uh, uh, Muslims who, who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they attained to that uh, kind of level, level. That's why the Prophet وسلم, used to enjoy praying. Hmm? Uh, he used to say to Bilal, uh, and make us uh, feel uh, good by, uh, by, by, uh, by praying. Uh, and this is in the Quran. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, حَبَّبَ إِلَيْهِمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِهِ Make them love iman and make seem good, uh, look good to them and... Uh, so this is just the opposite of what the shaitan does. The shaitan makes evil look good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you see good and evil in their true colors. And, 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 and that is a, a great help for the human being. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, tells about the connection between uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowledge. Just like إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء He also said أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِنًا يَحْزَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ If the one who uh, shows obedience to Allah أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ During the hours of the night prostrating himself or standing in prayer feeling the life to come and hoping for his Lord's mercy, is this one like the one uh, who, does, who does not do uh, anything like this? So, هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ Is this uh, one who has knowledge like the one who doesn't do this? So there is a relationship, a very strong relationship between worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, in all kinds of worship. Uh, Telling the, the truth, may, um, uh, engaging in da'wah, jihad, uh, uh, and so on. All this, all this is evidence that the person has true knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, uh, brothers and sisters, that we don't do good just because we have a strong will. Hmm? Just because we happen to have um, a strong will. We do good. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us to do good. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, used to make a very important dua. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan warzukna tiba'a. Wa arina al batila batilan warzukna jtinaba. Oh Allah, make us see good as good. Hmm? But that is not enough. Uh, he said, make us see truth as truth. Uh, but that is not enough. You can see truth as truth and yet not acknowledge it. So the Prophet said, 
and help us to act according to it. Why did I say you might, a person might know the truth and yet not acknowledge it? Because this is, even, this is also in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the people of uh, Pharaoh, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا They knew in their hearts of hearts that it was true, but they denied it because they are arrogant. And uh, this, is, this is the result of ignorance because uh, the shaitan makes him uh, see the acknowledgement of this truth as something to his disadvantage. So he denies the truth, which he knows, because he thinks that uh, acknowledging the truth will not uh, be to his, uh, uh, his advantage. Now, it's, uh, now uh, let me uh, finish just by saying a few words about happenings. Happenings. Uh, happenings are things of, on which we have no control. And we might have not any knowledge. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told his prophet to say, وَلَوْ كُنْتُ أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَكْسْتَكْسَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ Had I known the ghayb, I would have, um, I would have gained a lot of good. And the ulama said by good here means, he means uh, worldly good. Because the prophet ﷺ did يعني, have a, a lot of uh, good in the, in the religious and spiritual sense. But, if you know the future, then, as the Prophet, as the ayah says, وَمَا مَسَّنِي السُّوءُ No harm would um, touch me, because I know that if I take this uh, road, there will be an accident, so uh, I, uh, uh, I avoid it. I know that um, a sniper is waiting <laughs> in such and such a place, so I avoid uh, uh, that place, and, uh, and so on. So if you know the future, uh, no harm will, uh, will, will touch you at all. Uh, this is the first thing about happening. No one, not even prophets, no. They know only what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them about, and this is very meager um, in, 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 in relation to Allah's uh, knowledge. Secondly, uh, you must believe that after the thing happened, you must believe that it had to happen. Don't waste your time um, saying, I wish it didn't happen, well, why did it happen, uh, and so on. If it happened, it happened. So uh, this is uh, the uh, virtue of believing in, in, in Qadr. If it happened, it happened. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna law amal shaytan. Don't say, um, law means, uh, had it not been so, I, I, I would have done this, I would have done that. And if it, thirdly, if it is something good, then you must be grateful to Allah for it. Don't feel arrogant. Don't say, it is because of my effort. Don't say, as uh, Qarun uh, in the Quran, Qarun, that uh, rich man, uh, said, uh, Allah gave it to me because he knows that I deserve it. <laughs> and, and many uh, capitalists now say that, Almost the same thing. See, because this is because of effort. These poor people are lazy, and, and they they don't uh, they are not grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for for what Allah gave them. If it is something evil, something harmful, then no evil thing happen in the world. Evil in the sense that it is harmful to human being. And the cause of all evil in the world is what human beings do. So whenever um, um, you suffer any kind of uh, harm, even if you know that um, someone did this and he had no right to do it, the first thing you should do is to make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you say, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have يعني, punished me had, hadn't I done something uh, bad. So, if it is good, you become grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it is bad, you repent and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness.
Now, I conclude by answering a question uh, that I, um, I don't want to dwell on uh, very much, uh, and that is, uh, uh, I have been asked a question you find in the program, why does Allah allow evil? Hmm? This, I think, is like saying, why does Allah give us freedom? Because if he gives you the freedom to choose, and you choose evil, then he has to allow you to do evil. Otherwise, if, if I say to you, and these, are, uh, these look alike, uh, anyway, this one with the watch here, and this one, and uh, I say, take this or that. This is very good for you because there is a watch here. Hmm? Hmm? So, uh, and this is not as good as this, at, at least. But for some reason you say, I want this. Then I say, no. You have to take this. I didn't give you a choice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the way, this is the good, this is the way that leads you uh, to whatever is good for you in this world and the hereafter. This is the opposite of that. And you are free. You choose this. And that is evil. So Allah allows you to do it. He doesn't like you to do it. But He allows you to do it. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allows, uh, uh, allows evil in itself. But remember that evil is just something negative. Uh, evil, the nature of evil is not at that of good. Good is the basic thing. Evil is just the negation of, uh, uh, of evil. Uh, take, as if it is saying, take this way or don't take this way. <laughs> so if you take the way, that is uh, good. If you don't take it, that is evil. I will say this and I thank Allah for it. Zakallah khair. Have we got a roaming mic in the hall? Brothers at the back? Have we got a roaming mic? We have, yes. Okay, um, while they're preparing the roaming mics, I'll just summarize quickly what the Sheikh has touched on. It's, it's a very broad topic and... We do have some time for comments, questions, and answers. I would kindly ask you limit your comments and questions to one and a half minutes so that we can have the opportunity to have as many as possible. The Sheikh started with the definition of good and evil, and he said that good is something that's agreeable, enjoyable, beneficial, and evil is the opposite of that, something discomforting, something harmful. Now, there are two spheres of good and evil one that's within our control and one that's without our control. And the Sheikh concentrated on the evil which is within our sphere of control. And if everyone had complete knowledge, everyone likes to do something good, everyone indeed would do something good. Which is in a sense correct because if we use that term as beneficial, people do things that are beneficial to them and those intentions may come out of things that are bad, like greed. So people acquire money for themselves, although it's actually harming other people. And good and evil, again, can be relative, and it's a matter of perception and ignorance. And in terms of ignorance, it's the level of ignorance. Causes of um, good and evil, or causes of evil, our imperfection in the creation in the human being because only Allah is perfect. And also the second thing is good sometimes demands sacrifice. So you have to harm yourself. For instance, you go to the doctor and he gives you an injection which is quite painful for the greater good to make you feel well. And the third thing is pure ignorance uh, can be a cause. So people are ignorant, completely ignorant of what is good and what is evil. Whereas in the hereafter, you have pure good and pure evil in the Jannah and the Hellfire. Uh, second cause, uh, sorry, fourth cause is partial ignorance. 
So people see something as evil, but they see something else to gain. So they do the evil to gain the benefit, like stealing. And this necessitates a deterrent, which comes in the form of punishment, to deter people from doing evil like stealing. There's also momentary ignorance, where in the heat of the moment, people lose their knowledge, and they might do something that's evil. But if they repent, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. And the worst type of people are those who have become so bad, they see the good as evil, and the evil as good. And the solution for this ignorance is knowledge, but the knowledge must be in the mind and in the heart. And the most important knowledge is the knowledge of Allah, that we have love and fear for him. So we love him, so we don't want to do something that's bad and something that's evil. And if we love Allah, he'll make us see the good and despise the evil. And the Shaykh concluded with happenings, uh, which is, uh, in, in essence, the future. Because if people could see the future, they would acquire worldly gains and avoid some harm. Um, but no one sees the future except Allah, and the prophets see limited parts of the future in prophecy that Allah allows them to see. So if something happens, indeed if anything happens, it happens for a reason. And if something bad happens, you make istighfar, you ask Allah's forgiveness, uh, because there's been a defect in your character or in your works. And if something good happens to you, you be thankful and you give shukr to Allah. And the shaykh answer the question which is in, within the program, why does Allah allow even evil to happen? And because Allah has given the human being choice, then this necess necessitates the freedom to choose between good and evil. And sometimes, if the punishment is not in this world, the punishment will be in the hereafter, and the Muslim must strive for the best in this world and in the hereafter. Zakallah, and we'll take some questions uh, on the slips and on the roaming mics. Uh, we start with the first one, Sheikh. Said people borrow money from banks to buy property, e.g., mortgage. This is forbidden and is evil. You recommend your comments regarding this. Uh, regarding this, many people do this evil with knowledge. Um, and is that a good thing? Because there's some benefit in owning a property. No, so no, you... no. Right. So that's about three quarters of us in this room, yes? Because you can give many examples of uh, things which Allah said are haram, uh, and you can see some, uh, there is some, even drinking, Allah Himself said. Hmm? So you remember the verse in the Quran about drinking? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are some benefits for human beings in drinking and in gambling. But the evil is greater than the benefit. You see, this is the problem in this world. This is the problem in this world. Uh, a person will concentrate only on the benefit or the enjoyment and forget the evil that comes as a consequence of that. So you need guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah sees the whole picture. <laughs> so he tells you, no, what you see is only partial. Uh, uh, only part of the, uh, of the truth. Uh, the truth is that drinking and gambling are not good for you. Now, Before I go on to the next question, Sheikh, just, just to elaborate on that, uh, in the absence, if you like, of a halal monetary system, because there are people who, for instance, have been renting homes and their landlords have um, kicked them out, etc. So there's, there's also harm that sometimes can come out of the halal route because we live in an imperfect system. Yes, your problem is that you are living in... <laughs> you are living here. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I always tell the, the, the brothers and sisters that our life in the West is not a natural thing. Because had it been normal for a human being and, and for, a, for a Muslim to live in a non-Islamic society, a non-Islamic system, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't have made Islam a complete way of life. 
would have made it just like some religions now. He would have just said, uh, pray, fast, go to Hajj, uh, be, be morally upright, and then you can have whatever political or economic system you have. But Allah knows that uh, the, this, uh, the, the, the organization of society is very important for those basic things of, uh, of, of, of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some uh, external factors are helpful. Some of them are what the Quran calls fitna. Fitna means they make it difficult for you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are, uh, there, are, uh, in, there are exceptional cases, exceptional circumstances, in which I think which is, um, is, 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 is just to be a haram can be allowed. In, in exceptional circumstances, as the obvious example, um, it, lying is forbidden, it is evil. Huh? But if someone comes um, running here and says, says someone is going to kill me and he hides somewhere here and the person comes carrying a gun and you say, where is he? You say, you don't say, I'm truthful, uh, he is here. <laughs> no. So there are certain, certain circumstances um, in which these are exceptional circumstances uh, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is also in the Quran in the Quran in, 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 in cases like this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the whole, whole sharia is based on on increasing good and decreasing evil the whole sharia this is our main task in this life, is to increase the good and to decrease the evil. So if there are very exceptional circumstances where what is normally good results in evil, so we don't do it. Now, Can I take a question from the floor at the back? Bismillah uh, ar you said, um, relating to uh, one of the Quranic um, ayah, you said, um, innama, innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama. And you said that, the, you gave the example of two people. One having much knowledge of the Quran, and the other, little knowledge of the Quran. Mm -hmm. The latter lives by the little knowledge he has, and the former uh, refused to live by that knowledge. And the basis of that, uh, in our time, we see people giving many speeches. And the people, the ignorant, the, the common man, says about these people, such and such has knowledge. And yet, issues relating to the Muslims in our time, issues uh, to which the truth must be told, and the people need to be uh, given proper advice. And these so-called people who has knowledge, they refuse to uh, speak the truth about these issues. What is the, the, uh, the, the sharia in relation to good and evil in regards to these people? Uh, are they evil or are they good? Jazakumullah. They are evil to the extent that they do evil. <laughs> You can't say of a particular person that he evil, he's totally evil. Because the evil is a description of the acts that a person does. But you can, sometimes we do say about a person that he is evil, meaning that he, is, he always does some evil things. Uh, but what you said about the, uh, the, the people, yes, of course, they say that they, he has done it as far as they see. Because uh, to recite the Quran well, to uh, uh, know, know the Quran by heart, this is knowledge. But that is not by itself what I have described as effective knowledge. And effective knowledge is what is meant. And uh, knowledge is just on the top. The, the, uh, Ibn, Ibn Mas'ud is reported to have uh, told the people at his time, that you are living at a time 
where there are few qurra. Qurra means people who recite the Quran uh, by heart. Few qurra and many fuqaha. Means fuqaha who understand the Sharia. And there will come a time when there will be many qurra and very few fuqaha. And also, by fiqh is not meant that um, the, the learning by heart of um, so many rulings about salah and siyam and uh, mashah and so on and so on. Fiqh is deep understanding, the uh, understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And the test for that is action. The test for true knowledge is action. If you see a very ordinary person um, praying very well, uh, fasting, um, not uh, biting people, uh, ready to, uh, to, to give sadaqah, to sacrifice, then you can say that that person has knowledge. That person has knowledge. He has knowledge of real knowledge of Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and you see another person like the one whom you describe, gives very good speeches, make people cry, and he doesn't come to Salat al-Fajr. I mean, <laughs> some of them live, live even by the, they are neighbors of certain mosques, and they don't come to Salat al-Fajr. But if you invite him to make a lecture, yes, he will be uh, ready, even if it's at dawn. <laughs> Uh, so these are different, uh, th these people don't have the real knowledge that the Qur'an is talking about. What I'm going to do, I'm going to group some questions together, yeah, okay. Sheikh, so that uh, perhaps you can answer them together. Uh, the first group is to do with natural disasters. Is it good or evil? To what? Natural disasters like floods, ah. fires, ah. is it good or evil? even when they lead to sometimes children who are suffering. The next one is, is lying okay if it is to protect someone, or is this classed as an evil? And the third is, can you please elaborate on when Allah changes evil deeds to good ones? Uh, the second you have already answered. Uh, the first, uh, well, yeah, and if you remember my, my, uh, my description, explanation, I didn't want to say definition uh, of good and evil. Yes, of course, uh, all these are evil, are evil. But sometimes good might come as a result of a bad happening. You remember the verse in the Quran uh, when those people uh, accused the wife of the Prophet, Sayyida Aisha, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet and uh, his uh, household, he told them, لا تحسبه شرر لكم Don't think that this is evil for you. بل هو خير لكم Meaning that, he did, Allah did not mean that the act in itself uh, or the accusation was something good, but the result is good. And some people uh, sometimes make the mistake of judging uh, and act by the, by the consequences which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make uh, to, to, to be the results of it. No? Uh, the, 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 yeah, an, an, an act might be in itself bad, evil, mm. evil. Say now what the, uh, the uh, Americans did in Iraq. You say, this is evil. Mm? But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might, as a consequence of this, uh, let the Iraqi people uh, and have some other kinds of good. So you don't say, because the result was this, then the occupation or the attack was good. No. Uh, so the, 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 these happenings are evil. Are evil, yes. There is no... Evil in the sense that they are harmful to the, to, to the people. They make them suffer. Many people die and, and so on. Can I take a question from the floor? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, 
Please can I just quickly ask um, if you have a Muslim who is continuously committing a minor sin, he keeps committing it out of weakness. Um, can you, can he in that situation think to himself, I, I can't, I, I'll commit it and then I will do good deeds to cancel it out and increase my balance for the next life? Can he what? Uh, do good deeds after and therefore in, um, cancel out the, uh, the minor sin that he keeps committing. No. Um, uh, he can cancel them even just by making istighfar and tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. This is something that we have to do all the time. Because as I said, every one of us sins. Every human being makes things. You see, even prophets uh, feel that they make sins, but uh, the sins that uh, they think they make, <laughs> uh, for us they will not be sins at all. For example, um, if, uh, if just for some seconds um, the, he doesn't think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he will consider that as a sin. And then he goes and makes istighfar. Uh, some people, uh, you see, the more you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more sensitive you become to your sins. It is, uh, if someone doesn't worship uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't feel that he's doing any, uh, 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 anything uh, evil. In fact, you see many of them say, I don't do anything bad. I don't think so. I, I'm not doing anything bad. And I don't steal, I don't uh, do this, I don't do that. But uh, a Muslim, especially if he's a pious person, feels all the time that he is, uh, and he, he is sinful, and that's why he makes istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, he can make istighfar, and he can do good things, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُزْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ if you do something good, then these good things will wipe out or take away uh, all the sins that, uh, that, that you make. And had it not been for this, everyone will go to hellfire. <laughs> everyone will go to hellfire. It is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us that, uh, uh, that we don't go to hellfire. There is a hadith of the Prophet, مَن نُوقِشَ الْحِسَابَ if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naqasha means like some like interrogating, interrogates you about everything that you did, he want to help find. Now. Can I take uh, another set of questions? Uh, some of the questions that are, uh, that are on here are personal. And will you be around, Sheikh, during the huh? course? Will you be around later on today? I ah, yes, to sure. take some personal questions because some of the questions are quite personal. Uh, I move on to the next set. Assalamu alaikum. How can a person differentiate between a test and a punishment? And if a man can possess greater taqwa with little ilm, then how is taqwa gained? With what sort of ilm and where should the roots be? And a similar question we understand from the Quran, which you have mentioned in your talk that any evil comes to a person because he has done something wrong. Can you please then explain why the Prophet wasallam suffered when he did nothing wrong? The latter is a very sensitive question. Uh, but I can answer it because every time I say these people ask me the same question. <laughs> and, uh, there's a hadith of the Prophet. Which he said, uh, 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 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests uh, people according to their faith. Uh, the greater the faith, the more severe will be the test. Why? Because he wants them to set their account to be settled in this world. So, uh, he holds them accountable for everything that they do uh, in this world. 
so that every good thing that they did will be saved for them in the hereafter. But if Allah knows that someone's faith is weak, and he, if he is tested, then he might even lose that faith. So out of mercy for, for that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not test him. But this will be at the expense of his reward uh, in, in, in the hereafter. So the hadith says uh, that because of this, the people who, are, who, who face the severest test are the Anbiya, not only Prophet Muhammad, all the Anbiya. And خير الأنبياء ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم First the, the, the prophets, then those who come after them, then those who come after them. And the Prophet ﷺ said about himself, إِنِّي أُوْجَعُ كَمَا يُوْجَعُ رَجِلَانِ مِنْكُمْ When he suffers, say something like headache or so, this will be uh, like uh, what's it, double or what, um, <laughs> what ordinary people have. Uh, and and, and that, that's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. He wants to save everything that they did in this life uh, for the second life and reward them for, for, for it in the hereafter. Now. Can I take a question from the front? Uh, and by the way, but sometimes uh, the evil happenings do not uh, necessarily happen uh, if something happens to uh, a person, uh, that need not be because he himself did something. But if you are living in a community and there is more evil in, in that community than, and, and they did something bad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them all. And you will be included in that punishment. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you, give you uh, more reward. So the punishment um, might not be selective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes the whole uh, community for, 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 for doing something evil. Now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, my question actually regards the uh, last bit of your speech about the question why Allah allows evil. This is actually a question which is common in da'wah arguments. Sometimes we may uh, answer by that human beings have, big, uh, have given limited cognitive abilities constrained by place and time. So how can by this just encompass the wisdom of the creator of Allah or even understands at the limits of this world what happens in uh, all the, uh, the, in, the ins and outs of, a, of an accident like September 11, for example which is uh, uh, also uh, an example frequently asked. So how can, uh, I would like if you can elaborate here, how the arguments regarding this question should be articulated in issues of Tarot. Is that about it? It depends on what, uh, uh, when, what, what is meant by, uh, by evil. If, if it is, uh, I, I concentrate my, my, my answer on the evil that people do. The evil. Allah allows it. Because that is uh, the result of free choice. If he gives you free choice, then he allows you. Uh, and you see, the, the, uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the kuffar made the mistake of thinking that because Allah allows them, say, to worship uh, uh, something else besides him, which is the greatest evil, then this means that Allah likes him to, to do this. They, they, they confused Allah's, uh, Allah's permission with his love or liking. So Allah does not like people to, uh, to worship something besides him. In fact, he hates that. But he allows it because it comes as a result of something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to human beings. And that is the choice. My, my, uh, my, my answer was uh, confined to that. But it seems that you are talking about the evil, what they call it, the evil in the, in, in the universe. And I agree with you. I agree with you because you have to have the whole picture um, to see, uh, to be able to say what, whether that 
happening was evil in the absolute sense uh, or not. And uh, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do evil things. Allah does not. وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ Evil is not related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then the ulama also say that uh, because uh, uh, evil and good are uh, sometimes relative. Uh, I remember one alim gave the example of, uh, say, a judge who sentences a criminal, say, to capital punishment. He killed someone, and uh, the, 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 the judge said, sentenced him to capital said he must be killed. Uh, is what the judge, uh, uh, what, what the judge did, good or evil? What the judge did is good. Yeah. But it is not good for the person to be killed. <laughs> yeah. So the, 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 this, the, what the judge did is good, but what the criminal suffered is not good. And it, is, it is punishment. Had it been good, it would not have been and, uh, punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows, gives people the freedom to choose. That is good. And as a consequence of that freedom that he gave them, they do evil things. Allah does not do the evil thing. He allows the evil thing to happen. He creates all the circumstances that uh, allows a person to do the evil thing. But you don't say that Allah did it. Allah does not do it. There is, again, they uh, make a distinction between creating and doing. Creating and doing. Um, you don't, for, for example, if I pray, then every act in my prayer is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I myself am the creation uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot stand up or kneel or to the, without, uh, uh, without Allah's uh, will and creation. Uh, but I say I pray, I don't say Allah pray. Hmm? So everything that I did is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the act is my act. It is not uh, Allah's act. No. We can't take any more questions because we're coming to the end of our program. But perhaps just one comment on the issue the brother, brother raised. It is said that no action by itself is good or evil, but in the context of which it's carried out. So, for instance, killing in the case of murder can be evil, but as the Sheikh said, in the case of punishment might be necessary. Also, taking in itself is not an act of evil or good. But if you take something with permission, it is good. If you take something without permission, it is evil. And also, there's a question of the suicide bombings or, or 9-11. Again, you know, as a Muslim, if we look at the context, even if there are Muslims who are carrying out these acts, then we have to say that certain acts are bad or evil. But having said that, we may not understand the context in which those acts are being carried out. So if we take a small example of road rage, I mean, everyone gets frustrated on the road, and to get angry at another motorist is bad. It's, it's, it's evil, but sometimes we're provoked and we do carry out a bad act. That's not to condone, condone the act in any way, but sometimes the con context in which acts are carried out have a large influence on those acts. And, and I think it's, it's very difficult for us to, in the UK to comment about things that are going on on the ground, say in Palestine, because we don't understand the context in which those acts are carried out, although we may say that those acts are evil. Now, just uh, one or two announcements before we close. There's a limited amount of tapes and books of Sheikh Abdullah Hakim Quick, and those are available in the bazaar a newly released of 40 hadith of Islamic revival and sermons from down under, as in Australia. As you can see from the notice, lunch will be served at 12 o'clock with Doha and Asra after lunch, and that will be in the main hall. And the next session will be about 2.30 p.m. And I'll just like to ask the Sheikh to make a final comment and to close this session, inshallah. Uh, 
So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to uh, know him better and therefore to worship him uh, better. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us good people, to make uh, good, uh, lovable to us, and to make evil and hateful uh, to us. And I urge you to read uh, the Quran, not only to read uh, the Quran, but to think ab about it, to ponder uh, on it, to compare the verses, etc. Read more than one translation if you don't um, understand Arabic. Ask uh, questions. There is no harm in asking questions. If you find, uh, for example, it might seem to you that this verse contradicts that verse or so, there is no harm in asking. Uh, so long as you are asking just because you want to know, you are not saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala contradicts himself, but the, you are saying that seems to me uh, to be so. So I, 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 my advice to you is to read the Qur'an, think about um, uh, the, the, the Qur'an, and inshallah, because this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will change your heart and make you good people. Assalamu alaikum.